Welcome to a new vlog and it's not just a clickbait title, I was truly impressed by the level of debug capability this little tool has. I think there is no other like it on the market as far as I know and you'll have to stick around with me in this video to learn about the full capabilities of this tool but just to give you an idea of what this Active Pro debugger uh, can do, it allows you to capture and analyze on the same interface analog inputs, digital inputs, digital outputs in a logic analyzer style that you might be used to but on top of that it adds the active debug interface which you can integrate into your firmware as a snippet of code which then allows you to output whatever data you want via a standard printf function and that goes via a either a one or two wire interface depending on the speed that you might need to this device and it can capture that and then you can analyze all of it in the provided software. And throughout the video I will be showcasing a short demo that I put together but I will also be referencing short clips from the webinar that Active Pro put together for their tool so I highly recommend you check out that webinar by hitting the link below in the description. Also, if you'd like to purchase one of these, there will be a link and a special discount code provided for my viewers in the description below. And same as always, full disclosure, this tool was sent in for free for the purpose of this review. But whatever I discover, good or bad, will be presented in this video. The unit comes in this nice little box. It's pretty compact and it has a uh, USB Type-C port. Inside the box, you get a USB Type-C to Type-A cable. A set of very nice silicon wire jumper leads, very flexible, and the compatible uh, mini hooks for probing onto these. In terms of uh, specs, at least for the Pro version that I have here, these are four analog inputs with a combination of both single ended and differential with measurable input range from 0 to 20 volts or minus 10 to plus 10 volts for the differential but uh, all of these are tolerant up to minus 30 plus 30 volts and they are sampled at 1 mega samples per second uh, for the single ended inputs and 200 kilo samples per second in the differential mode input. There are 8 digital channels with a sample rate of uh, 120 meg samples with the fastest measurable digital input signal being 60 megahertz it uh, supports 1 to 5 volt uh, voltage levels but they're tolerable up to 9 volts the sample buffer depth is only limited by disk size on the pc size and it does actual hardware decoding for many protocols which increases the sample rate for the hardware decoders up to 240 meg samples per second they uh, promise also some future hardware bus decoder implementations for USB, CAN, LIN, I2S and others. It also has some outputs. There are two digital channels which can do 0, 3.3 volt and tri-state. Digital PWM 0 to 100% at 250 kilohertz with a drive current of, of up to 8 milliamps. Although they don't specify it, I assume that is a per channel limit. There are two analog output channels, uh, they can do 0 to 3.3 volt with a step size of 0 0.1 volts um, so they can vary the voltage on those outputs. Uh, you can have some sine, uh, wave, triangle, square waves on those uh, with a frequency of 62 hertz up to 25 kilohertz. And you also get up to four of those uh, special active debug ports which you can monitor up uh, simultaneously with up to 64 distinct channels per each device. So that's a crazy number, 64 times 4. Uh, it's a crazy number of available uh, variables that you can analyze. And the app that they provide works on Windows and Mac OS. There are also two other versions of the active uh, debugger and those are intended uh, for, there's one that it, it is intended for the average hobbyist and it has just one active debug uh, device support but still that's one device with up to 64 separate channels which is a bargain considering it's priced much lower and the average hobbyist will likely never hit that limitation. And there's also the enterprise version for the professional user that you know, needs the extended warranty and support that comes with that. Before I continue with the review of this product, let me mention the sponsor of this video, PCBWay.com, a professional PCB manufacturer with fast turnaround times and excellent quality. But not only that, you can also get your entire product manufactured with PCBWay because they offer services like PCB assembly, enclosure manufacturing, parts sourcing, so give them a try on your next order. 
So my experience with setting up the Active Pro started off pretty disappointing. It's the dreaded firmware upgrade request that is likely you will receive when first uh, starting to use any new USB tool. And I installed the um, provided software, which went smooth. I opened the app. It asked me which type of tool I have. I selected the Active Pro option. I connected the tool via USB. It didn't ask for any drivers or anything like that. So it must have autom automatically installed it, which it triggered the firmware update request. I said yes. And then the tool started blinking the blue LED and it kind of stuck there. Long story short, after waiting for a while, I had to kill the app disconnected the device and start over and this time it said firmware is not loaded and offered to do it and it worked it loaded the firmware successfully so thank god it had a working auto recovery function in there some feedback that i'd like to provide here is to improve the firmware update feature and the stability of the app so that it doesn't crash because i believe something happened with the windows app while it was updating the firmware so this just creates anxiety and disappointment for the user it's, it's not a great start Second, it, it, it would be best if the app auto identified the type of device or license the user has, so it doesn't have to ask the user for that. And third, it would be nice to show in the bottom of the um, application, in the stat status bar, show it that it's connected or disconnected and maybe show the firmware version as well so that you can get a quick glimpse at the connection status of your device. But once the firmware update issue was out of the way, I quickly discovered the power of the software and how many nice features it has built in. So I put together this very simple test setup which involves an ESP32 board which is reading this uh, accelerometer over I2C and then I also have one active pro debug interface channel defined in the firmware and um, it's just printing various stuff like accelerometer values on that channel and various debug messages. Then I'm also reading the I2C bus itself by tapping the connections to the accelerometer. So this will be working like a logic analyzer. On the firmware side, it doesn't really matter which IDE you are using. As long as it's C based, you just take this snippet of code that Active Pro is providing. You include it into your project. You define the actual interface. In my case, it was Arduino under platform IO and I just wanted to use the two pin SPI interface for the active debug interface. So I just specified a couple of GPIOs to use for that on my uh, ESP32. And I, I then started adding these um, function calls for active debug and you just use them like a very simple printf throughout your code. On the PC app side, all I had to do was to configure an active debug interface on channel zero and one and uh, an I2C interface on channels 2 and 3. And it doesn't even matter which way you connect these, like SCL, SDA, or which pin is data, which pin is clock. It just figures that out on its own. And isn't that awesome? Same for the firmware side. You just specify the channel uh, you want to print on in the uh, call of the function, and it automatically assigns the variable names and organizes everything neatly in the GUI. And in my particular case, I wanted to give a debug message for each run of the Arduino loop. So this line takes care of that. I also wanted to print the X, Y, Z values that are being read and returned by the accelerometer library. And at the same time, I wanted to see the I2C traffic. And here is the result of that capture. At the top, we see the debug message saying loop, which we know I, uh, we are sending for every new loop iteration in our code. And we can measure the time between those uh, messages by placing some markers, uh, left click for marker zero, right click for uh, marker one. And right there we get delta. It's telling us that we have a loop time of 4.3 milliseconds. Then we have the X, Y, Z variables that we are printing from inside our loop over the debug interface. And we can put our own labels in here by simply clicking their names. Then below that we have the I2C capture channel and we can see the actual I2C communication with our sensor showing us the actual bytes going back and forward. But here's the nice thing. The software supports something which is called Packet Presenter. And this is basically a packet decoder that you can write yourself um, in their specific format, which is well documented on their website. So instead of, you know, watching hex values by having this packet presenter, it will now show more meaningful decoded uh, information like 
you, you get the start, the stop, the read, write events, and it can extract the actual values like the X, Y, Z axis from an accelerometer based on the register addresses, and it will show those below the actual I2C received packet. Isn't that awesome? But that's not all. You can even create graphs then based on these decoded values and see them in a graphical way. For this example, I'm just including a snippet from their uh, webinar just because I don't have a packet decoder written for my specific sensor. But the company hopes to grow the packet decoder list and make those available on their website uh, through user contribution. Right now, we can only get like a basic I2C decoder or a basic SPI decoder. And you're not even limited to uh, debugging a single system by going for the active pro device which allows up to four different uh, debug devices you can have you know two three four different processors like you can have an esp32 and an admega each doing its own thing but they're somehow interconnected they're programmed with two entirely different ids uh, but if they talk together via some kind of digital in in interface or analog interface to other or to other peripheral devices, you could be tapping onto those interfaces and you could be measuring all of those different things, data coming to and from multiple devices, internal software, calculated variables, register values, you name it. You can print anything you want on that interface. And all of that is brought together in the GUI. Uh, it's all time synced together with the logic analyzer data, together with the analog data and all the other triggers that you can add, all nicely decoded. And just name one other product that can do that. Another bonus feature that you get with this device is the ability to do active current measurement. So you could be looking um, at what your device is doing, how it communicates, but also seeing how the current waveform looks like on the same graph, time synced with your other events. And remember that differential analog input channel that I mentioned in the beginning, well, simple enough, you connect the appropriate shunt resistor value to one of those differential inputs, you measure the voltage drop on that resistor, and the software has this current measurement option where it automatically calculates the current based on the resistor value that you input. Isn't that great? Now, for those of you curious about the insides of this device, the website does show that proudly, but if you're looking for some higher resolution, more detailed image, I'm gonna open my unit up. And uh, yep, these, th this enclosure is 3D printed, but uh, on a high quality multi-jet fusion printer, and it looks very nice. And how the devices we observe in here are the uh, Cypress CY7C68014, and this is a high-speed USB capable microcontroller and you'll typically find these uh, dedicated USB microcontrollers from Cypress on devices which just need a reliable way of interfacing via USB and transferring lots of data. There is also an ICE40 UP5 from Lattice. This is an Ultra Plus family FPGA with uh, about 5k of logic cells and uh, this guy is for sure in charge of the high-speed hardware decoding and then packing that data and sending it to the pc via the mcu from uh, uh, cypress then we have another mcu from cypress and this is the cy8c5888 lt and this time it's a 32-bit SOC 5 cortex m3 with built-in dax adcs and all you can think of if I would have to guess, this guy is in charge of the actual input and output uh, data capture. It's interesting that they have a two MCU solution in here. One which is dedicated to the USB interface and another one for the rest of the stuff. But it's understandable because, uh, well, the Cortex-M3 guy only supports a more limited USB full speed at 12 megabits per second, while the more uh, uh, specialized USB MCU can handle more throughput up to 53 megabits per second, and that is for sure needed to uh, push all of that high sample rate, uh, all of that amount of data through USB. So while it looks like there isn't much happening in the hardware there is however a lot of magic in the firmware of these chips i'm not even sure that i've covered all of the features of this tool there's plenty of feature in the app itself it's just so feature packed that 
uh, it, it's impossible to capture all of that in a single video without getting too boring. This tool is up there on my favorites list together with the Joule Scope. So if you're into hardware and firmware development, you must absolutely give this a try. It can be a lifesaver in some complicated debug sessions, effectively reducing your debug and development time, possibly helping you avoid those headaches from bashing your head on the desk whenever something is not working and you've been trying to find the problem for hours. And it can do that just because it, it closes the gap between all the different domains, digital, analog, firmware, you can view it all on the same graph. So you can more easily spot if the problem is in the hardware or in the firmware. I'm really happy I got the chance to review this tool uh, but even if I wouldn't have gotten it for free, I would have jumped on the purchase decision for the Active Plus version, which sells for just $250. I don't do firmware development, but I do hardware development, and oftentimes I have to write minimal firmware just to validate the hardware is working. And oftentimes I find myself debugging for hours, uh, but no more. I'm sure this tool will help me with future projects. So if you're looking to get one, please check out their website and the discount code provided in the description below this video. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you soon.